Madam Clerk. Tucker Whitman. Here. Ben Vitale. Present. Mark Farrell. Here. Paul Pickney. Here. Joseph Runkle. Present. Keith Batman. Here. Hans Petcher. Here. Terry Baxter. Aye. Joseph Bennett. Here. Frank Reginelli. Here. Patrick Mahonick. Here. Timothy Lattimore. Present. Michael Didio. Here. Brian Foley. Present. Michael Chapman. Here. Could you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. Please keep in mind all the victims of the recent terrorism and also uh, Courthouse Special Deputy and retired Auburn Police Officer David Buckingham, who is presently hospitalized. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 603, at this time I'd like to open up the public hearing on the 2016 county budget. Does anyone at the, from the legislature wish to speak with regard to the budget? If not, we will go ahead and start calling the folks up who have signed up. Mr. Beckwith. Thank Welcome. You, Mike. Appreciate it. Good evening. <laughs> This, can you all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good evening. I'm Jim Beckwith. I'm president of Owasco Watershed Lake Association, and I'm here tonight to mm -hmm. give you some good information on the lake. And I also want to thank all the people that have been supporting uh, Aula and that are members that are here tonight also. First of all, though, before I do this, I want to thank the legislators and Suzanne also on what you have to go through to get a balanced budget. It's very difficult. It's a, literally, it's walking that fine tightrope of what you can spend money on and what you can't. The important thing is you have to prioritize. And in this case, your priority, I believe, and these people believe, and anybody that has been involved with any part of the Wasco Lake, they also believe. We are a, a Aula, which I left on all of your uh, uh, tables there. There's a little information on what we are and what we believe in. And we believe in restoring, protecting, and preserving a Wasco Lake and its watershed. It is the single biggest, best, asset that Cayuga County has. Whether that be for drinking water or for eating food or for drinking milk, it is very important that you put a top priority and increase the budget for all the different organizations that have worked very hard to help the lake. We don't need to cut their budget, we need to increase their budget. Just very quickly, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I got a call from my um, sister yesterday. She's about to rent a camp on Owasco Lake. She said, Jim, I've got family coming in from Scotland, Prague, from LA, from Portland, and they come every year. She said, I'm not sure I should even rent the cottage because if I can't swim in the lake, what's the point? But more importantly, they love to come here. They like to go to restaurants. They like to go to the merry go -round theater. They like to swim in the lake. They like to rent a boat. All this is economic impact that will really hurt the lake not to mention the values of properties going down. All I needed to say was you must, I hope, not decrease the budget, but increase the budget for 
the agencies that are critical to Owasco Lake. Thank you. Terry Lattimore. <coughs> My name is uh, Terry Latham. I'm a resident in Owasco. I've been involved with Owasco Lake since I was four years old, which is pushing over 55 years now. I've seen the degradation of the lake uh, dramatically. Um, actually, I live on the Owasco River, or the outlet, most people call. And uh, I really think that uh, we, we got to <coughs> change our thinking pretty fast, pretty dramatically to uh, stop this degradation of the lake. Although if we lose the lake, we're going to lose everything in the county. I think you'll find that if you do a, a, a study on uh, where your money's coming from in the county and your property tax, especially even sales tax expenditures, you're going to find that uh, Owasco Lake property and the people around it and, and the watershed are probably generating a significant, the most portion of your, where your money's coming from that's, that's uh, supporting the whole county's uh, expenditures. Uh, the soil and water, I think, could be a critical, and it is a critical aspect of uh, the solution to making the lake correct. Now, I'm, I'm not happy with uh, that they didn't use the weed cutter this year, and I think there should be some readjustments within all the organizations to uh, I would like to kind of actually see the weed cutting program in the parks and recreation so you have no more direct contact with the, being a, a, a direct county agency uh, and that way you, you have more control and that way it takes some of the workload off of the, off of the soil and water and let them focus in on maybe some stream bank stabilization programs because I think that stream bank stabilization is one of the biggest causes of uh, soil erosion into the lake and we need to really stop that. And, uh, and with the Cornell Cooperative, we're talking about cutting their budgets. The Cornell Cooperative, if, if, we, if we stop taking in the hazardous waste days and the electronic days, you're gonna start finding all that material out on the back roads in the county. So if those projects stop, it's gonna cause a lot of headaches for you out there. So I really think that you're gonna to have to um, if anything, you may want to move some things around, but overall, your expenditures on uh, conservation and environmental needs in this county are going to probably have to increase. Otherwise, there's, there's really no sense, you know, there's nothing worse than to live around here after all these years and you see the green bacteria coming down the river and on the lake when you go out in it. And really, nobody really, I think, really understands how serious this uh, cyanobacteria really is yet. I think that when the, the couple years from now, we'll probably find out that it's a lot worse than we even think it is. Thank you. Ed Wagner. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ed Wagner, supervisor for the uh, town of Owasco. For the, uh, I want to give you a little bit of background. For the last eight years, being an elected official, I had the privilege to work <coughs> with the Water Quality Management Agency. I had to work with the Wasco Lake, uh, Wasco Lake Management Council. I'm the chair of the inspection program and also serve as the chair of the uh, invasive species task force that has done studies for agent clams. Uh, I also work with organizations such as the Army Corps of Engineer, DEC, New York State Canal Corporation, local and state officials to help provide quality drinking water for Cayuga County. I go to a lot of meetings every year. I've been doing it for eight, eight years. 
The reason why I'm here is to encourage this board to restore and increase funding specifically for the organizations that deal with Owasco Lake and other impaired water bodies within Cayuga County. If this $64,000 cut that's proposed to the Soil and Water Conservation District goes through, you have already cut their budget in 2013 by $50,000. In 2014, $36,117. In 2015, you cut it $38,724 for a total of $124,000. 841. If this proposed budget goes through, you would have cut almost $190,000 out of their budget, almost 25% from over three years ago. And for those three years, having worked on Owasco Lake, having dived in the lake for Asian clams, I see what the lake condition is doing. It's not getting better. With a cut, more cut of funding, We've already, and as Mr. Lattimore mentioned, we're not happy that the lake didn't get cut this year. Next year, we'll get a cut, but Cuga Lake won't get a cut. If more funding happens, maybe none of them will get cut. And looking at what happened this past year with the blue-green allergy outbreaks, I don't want to be there. How does this board want to be remembered? That's my question. Do you want to be remembered as an organization that advocated for this lake? That's how I would want to be remembered. For me, this is about drinking water. Besides the air we breathe, this is the most valuable asset that we have. We must protect it, and if we don't, we'll be spending more money years from now and wishing we had clean water. This is part of our, the reason why we're here, the quality of life in Cayuga County. And the pristine lake that we have is the most important thing in my mind that we need to accomplish is to protect that lake and other impaired water bodies <laughs> within Cayuga County. Thank you. Lake Road, Owasco Lake, and I'm here to also encourage the, not the decrease, but the increase of the funding to the agencies in the county and departments who are involved with clean water, spe specifically the Soil and Water Conservation District. I sense that this, ha this has bipartisan support, and everybody has a special interest, but I think the majority of the people in Cuga County, their special interest is clean water, safe drinking water. I know we have, it's, I don't envy your difficulty, the difficulty you have with balancing your budget, but if we don't spend more money now for the water quality, I really believe that not too distant future, the federal government, the state government may come down with mandates to require local governments and county governments to provide better solutions for our officially impaired Owasco Lake. Thank you. Julie Lockhart. Good evening. Um, everybody can hear me okay? Um, my name is Julie Lockhart. I am a resident of Owasco at 6720 East Lake Road. I live on Sucker Brook and across the street from the lake. And I'm not here because I'm an elected official. Um, I'm not an expert. I am a resident. I am a new resident. I'm one of those rare people who moves into Cayuga County these days and settles in Auburn because I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Um, this place is so lovely, and um, that's why I'm here. And I know I'm speaking for people who have been here for their whole lifetime, but also 
who have come recently, like myself. Um, I have a science and education background, and I want to urge you that when you're facing something big, a problem, ignoring it does not make it go away. You have to look for answers, and to find answers, you have to ask questions. And you have to ask questions from people who are trained to ask those questions and know that the answer they're seeking is going to come from the way they're asking that question. Um, I am in the process of trying to learn myself as much as I can about this, um, surrounded as I am on basically all sides with water. Um, water I cannot let my dogs go into during the summer. Um, water that I have to be careful wading in, and I don't even want to think about the situation with drinking water in the future. Um, before I finish, I just want to share three short anecdotes, because sometimes I think those can have the most impact. Um, anecdote one, I'm walking along the lake the day before Governor Cuomo came here to celebrate our amazing freshwater resources with the governor's fishing challenge, and I don't have the proper name there. Um, Twelve hours before that event, which was being touted in the newspaper, Cayuga County's health department closed the beach at Emerson Park because there was a massive bloom of cyanobacteria lacing the shoreline, and I got a very good look at it. It was also in the mouth of Sucker Brook, and the young firefighters who were lowering booms in it to, quote, keep it out of the lake from Sucker Brook, it wasn't blooming in the brook at all. It was along the lake. So I see a need for education. I also see a need for communication. I am a nubus about um, politics. I don't understand all the agencies involved. I would like to be taught more, and I'm looking for it myself, but I think there's a big, big amount of room for educating the general public. Um, another case in point, I live three doors up from where that bridge has been replaced since uh, July 1st, and in fact, it just opened today. Um, the workers who were in that water day in and day out for months did not know about the danger they were putting themselves in. I walked down there with my dogs one day and asked them if they were aware of the cyanobacteria that, let's see, on October 5th um, was found to be from Drew Snell's work with the, with the um, Soil and Water Conservation District at 1,271 micrograms per liter when 20 micrograms per liter is considered safe by the Department of Environmental Conservation. The toxicity levels were 587 micrograms per liter, and these people were in there. I talked to one of the workers, and he said that he remembered another person he was with had a rash on his hands um, a day or two after being in the water for several hours. There are many, many complexities with this issue, and it's not going away. And if we don't do something, there's going to be harm and complications in ways we haven't even thought of yet. Thank you very much for listening. Debbie McCormick, uh, city councilor for the city of Auburn and city resident, of course. Um, I serve on the water, the Owasco Watershed Inspector Committee and the Owasco Watershed Quality, Owasco Lake Quality. I know there's so many of them that it's hard to remember which one is which. But believe me, I'm on a lot of committees about the lake, the Cuga Lake or Owasco Lake. But it's all of our lakes that really, um, all of the lakes we have. A, Someone st um, quoted a statistic the other night about how many um, miles of shoreline we have, and I think it, I don't know the exact number, but it was uh, an incredible number. And if there's anybody here, if Bruce Natalie is here, he'll know. But um, we have a beautiful place. We have uh, we need to take care of it, and I'm so glad to hear from people that have moved here and are advocating for the lake. Um, before I start about the, uh, the lake, I want to talk about wa soil and water. The Soil and Water Agency and the proposed cuts to that. As a city resident and a city councilor, I discovered last year exactly wh what the city of Auburn residents ben actually do benefit. Everybody likes to say from the city, what do we get from the county? We don't get about anything, but we pay taxes. Well, the county soil and water does assist the city of Auburn 
when they need it, they've discovered a relationship where, where we would normally hire a, uh, maybe another contractor or something. We look to the Soil and Water Agency, and um, I've talked to Mike Talbot today, for example. He would call them to consult on issues several times throughout the year. They've used this county soil and water to grind logs and stumps at the landfill, and the city pays them. We pay for this service, $325 an hour, which according to Mike Talbot is a lot cheaper than going to a, an outside company for that. So you're saving, this agency saves city taxpayers in, in, in a roundabout way, but it is an agency that really provides a, a service, a lot of services. Um, and back to the lake, they, they, they provide a lot of um, services and education to preserve and protect our natural resources, whether, they're, whether it's the lake or anything else. But specifically to the lake, um, Ed Wagner, uh, he covered a lot of the um, dollars and cents. And uh, I wanted to cover the, the Owasco Lake Watershed Inspector Program. We've, we had one watershed inspector that just was hired maybe, well, it, the whole, like three or four, I don't know how long, because I've only been on it two years, but the new one, Drew Snell, has been here for about two years. Just this past year, we were able to get two full-time inspectors. And it's, it, was, it squeezed the budget. And the budget is, per, the money we get for the, that inspection program is, comes from the rates that the city, city, of water, city of Auburn water users pay and the town of Owasco. So that's funded through that, not through uh, city or county tax dollars. But to cut funds to the county soil and water or any of the other agencies that support the watershed inspection program would be like, uh, taking steps backwards, actually, because now that we've got two inspectors, which is hardly enough to cover what we need to do, two is like a drop in the bucket compared to other um, other lakes and like Skinny Atlas or someplace like that. But it, it would be like erasing one of them because they do soil and water does a lot of work to support the so the um, watershed inspector program, and I think um, be besides the recreation. The drinking water, it is a critical, it is critical. I mean, we love the tourism and the recreation aspect of the lake, but without drinking water, uh, I, don't, I don't even want to think about it. And right now, it, it, it's not affecting it, so we filter and we test it, but it, it is something that is, I'm very proud to serve on these committees for the, for the lake, but the more I learn about what's going on, the more, uh, sleep I lose because it's so serious what's going on with the lake. We can't afford to cut. We really need to think about increasing our attention to the lake and it might, it does mean we're going to have to spend more money and I don't mean just at the city and county level. I, I think the federal and uh, state government need to pay more attention to New York State's waterways because they are what makes New York State so beautiful. So much of our economy depends on our natural resources. So I'm just asking that you reconsider some of the cuts that you have to them. I know you have to consider a lot, but there, there's got to be a way to do this. It, it really is that important. Thank you. Michael Brook. <clears throat> My name is Michael Broughton. I live on Capitol Street here in Auburn. I am not here to talk about Owasco Lake, although I would like to preface my comments by saying that I would not uh, support any measures that cut any of the organizations that are trying to improve the quality of the water. Um, I moved to Auburn four years ago from out of state for work. Uh, it's just something that you don't hear too often around here. Uh, three years ago, I purchased my house on Capitol Street. Uh, as a middle-class homeowner and a taxpayer in this county, I'm very concerned by the direction the legislature, as well as the Auburn City Council, has taken with regards to my property taxes. Uh, as I hope we all know, the property taxes here are already among the highest in the country. Uh, when I purchased my house in November 2012, uh, 
the city county and school tax bills combined total 2,900 a year. Uh, in three years, it's jumped to $3,700. Uh, the national average for property tax is 1.4% 1 per 1 of a home's value annually. Uh, if Auburn and, and Cuyahoga County was average uh, on a national level, the bill on my modest $100,000 house would be $1,400 a year. Uh, now, I fully realize that New York is expensive in general. Uh, the median rate for the state is 3%. So even if New York, or I'm sorry, Auburn were with the New York State median, my bill would be $3,000. Again, I'm paying $3,700 a year. Uh, the house I purchased is an apartment house. Uh, despite having a full-time job with an above average salary for this area, side jobs and rental income, my $3,700 a year tax bill represents almost 7% of my income. I repeat, 7% of my gross income goes to my property taxes. In New York as a whole, the median percentage of household income spent on property taxes is just under 5%. The national average is 3.25% of household income. 7% is absurd. Governor Cuomo's tax cap is, is intended to help people like myself who are being crushed by property taxes, even with a good income and inexpensive property. As you know, every time this legislator or the city council overrides the cap, the homeowners lose the state rebate. I hear a lot of politicians talking about attracting young professionals to this area, and well, that's me, uh, and I'm discouraged. Where's my $3,700 a year going? Why should people like me buy property here? And why should young people right out of college rent apartments here when landlords just like myself have to charge rents high enough to rival the big cities just to pay our tax bills? We're paying more than enough already. I'm urging this, le this legislature to identify more savings and get the tax levy increase under the 1.25% cap. Uh, voting no today will mandate the hard work that will be required to find those savings. Again, I am not in favor of a dirty Owasco Lake. Thank you very much. Dan Souls. Good evening, uh, Dan Souls, 45 Lakeshore Drive, Arbor, New York, or I guess it's Wasco. Um, I've been on the lake for, since 1982. Uh, I would have to say that the lake is probably the most important reason that our family lives here. Uh, the lake itself is what's kept us here. We made a decision in our company three years ago to either decide to move our company to Virginia, our headquarters where 92% of our growth is, or to stay here in Cuga County. I was the CEO and president of the company and the senior partner. I still had enough pull that I could, I could uh, change some minds. So I decided to uh, sell our company. I'm moving to the Plaza of the Arts, which you're probably aware of right across the street here. And we built that uh, several years ago. We invested uh, close to $3.5 million into that project alone. We moved part of our accounting uh, offices up here, our marketing, our development, uh, our education programs, all of our training was moved to Auburn which again, it's nice to see several other people in this room that have moved jobs to Auburn and now taken them out of here in, in residences also. So basically, our number one reason for our company staying here was a Wasco Lake and clean water. And we know that we have a fifth of the world's clean water in this part of the country, and we have to protect it every way we possibly can. But um, so if we, we don't take care of the soil and conservation, we don't take care of the lakes, what other marketing employee do we have to keep people here in central New York? We have to take care of the water. So I want to speak to the legislators just on a very quick fiduciary type of thought here. Because at the end of the day, no different than the gentleman who spoke before me and other people that may speak after me, it really comes down to the numbers. It's about how do you balance that budget. Same thing when I run our companies. We have 900 employees. We do $40 million in just our restaurant sales alone. But we have to balance our budget every year the same as you do. So we have to drive income. So how do you drive income? In this case, I think you gotta look at the lake as a whole. There's roughly 1,100, 1100 residents on the lake that average about $300,000 value per residence. That's $330 million 
of, of taxed property. $330 million worth of taxed property on Owasco Lake, much of that in the town of Owasco. If we lost 20% due to the fact that the lake wasn't being taken care of and protected properly, and by the way, mind you, that Skinnellis Lake is in the largest increase in, in values they've seen in years because it's such a pristine lake. But if we lost 20%, 20%, that would be $66 million worth of tax dollars values, and that turns into at 9.49, which is the tax rate in town of Owasco, that'd be $626,000 a year that we would lose in the county. $626,000 a year. But let's look at the positive side of this. What if we took care of the lake? What if we protect our natural resource? What if we got back on where we should be and made it one of the greatest places to be and to recreate and to drink and to play, and we increased it 20, 20%, which is really what we all want. That would increase it $626,000 and change. Total number, over $1.2 million on the flip from what we could lose in value to what we could increase in value. And as a business person, that's how I look at things every single day. What's the downside and what's the upside? You people in this room have to make a major investment tonight. This is what I would bet on, the lake. Put your money behind the lakes. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak with regard to the county budget? Come on up. Um, I, I think the points about the lake are well taken. Can we, <coughs> can we get your name? Yes, uh, Andy Reinflush with the Union Springs Springport Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. But we, we really need to publicize that we have these great lakes. Um, what I'd like to ask the county is to support the Bassmaster event. You know, last year we asked you for 10,000. <coughs> it's really important that we have the county support. It helps us with our other fundraising. Uh, we'll, and we'll work hard, you know, to make sure we get that money. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, last year with the ESPN, we had over three hours of coverage. We had a half an hour coverage this spring. And it really goes um, to attract tourism and to attract people to the county. Uh, Meg Vanek said you can't buy this kind of exposure. So with that, I'll let you go. Mr. Didio. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to strike the $64,000 cut to the, to the soil and water and restore it to the original amount. And I'll second it. Second. Mr. Baxter seconds. <clears throat> Any discussion? Mr. Where, Batman. Where's the money coming from? Fund balance. Yeah. Mr. Batman? The, uh, I guess I have a little different idea. I was, was, was taken the, I was taken with the testimony. And I heard, I heard, uh, thank you. I heard several things from, from the testimony. I heard the, the critical importance of the, of the water, which we all agree is, is critical. The, uh, I think as many of you know, as many of you know, I've been involved in water issues for, for many years as well. So you don't need to tell me that it's important. So that's, that's point number one, and I think we all accept that. Point number two I heard, is, is, is that we have to find ways of focusing our money on improving the quality of the water. Well, I'm not certain if the best way to do that is restoring 64,000 to soil and water. Perhaps it is, but it's, it, it's, it's not a foregone conclusion. There are lots of needs. That may be the best thing, but I'm not so sure, sure, sure it is at this point. The, uh, that's point number two. Point number three, something I was really taken with, is the fact that this is a, um, a, a state, a federal, a city, a county, a local problem for all of us. And I'm curious to know if perhaps what we should pursue the, um, 
the or the the uh, um, the town of Wasco, the city of Auburn, the uh, the other towns that border the lake, as well as the, the the towns that use the water to see if they could take the the, the contribute to that sixty four thousand. Sixty four thousand dollars for us, the uh, is a let's see one two is about a, a four tenths of a percentage uh, tax increase. Almost one half percent on the tax levy. The, uh, if we spread that along the towns, we can restore the sixty-four thousand for the lake without impacting the the, uh, the taxes, as this gentleman was talking about. Fund balance or no fund balance, ultimately, eventually, everything comes from taxes. So that's an, that's an alternative we might want to look at. If people don't want to do that, I would, at the minimum, suggest instead of simply throwing money <coughs> at some water or throwing money at at health department or planning or throwing money at me, that the perhaps that we put that money in contingency, the and we say okay, this money is we're going to use for water quality as we go through the year, the uh, that's what it's going to be for, and we're going to use it to its highest and best use. So just the I'm not making any motions, but these are these are ideas that I think we should pursue before we simply restore money to to some water from fund balance. Mr. Whitman. Uh, <clears throat> going with Keith's idea and, and kind of spreading it out between different municipalities, it might be a question for Fred or somebody else. Is it possible to create a special tax district for a purpose like that around Owasco Lake? Not that I'm aware of, but I'd be happy to look into it. As I sit here, Mr. Whitman, I don't know the answer to that. Mr. Batten? Yeah, and just for clarifying, for clarifying, Tucker, the, the soil and water is is an independent, independent of the county. Right. And I wasn't thinking there would be a tax. Rather, I was thinking that just as we contribute, the city of Auburn would contribute ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, the town of Owasco would contribute five thousand dollars, the town of wherever. So it would the, the, the towns absolutely can support mm -hmm. the work of the, of that agency, um, the, for sure. And actually, I think do probably do now. In, in Specs. So there's a mechanism to it for sure. Whether there's a will to do it, I don't know. But we've heard from leaders in, in several of these towns, so I would hope that we do have the will to do it. Mr. Petra. Uh, I'm opposed to restoring the money to the budget uh, for several mm -hmm. reasons. Uh, one of them being we have no control over uh, the Southern Water District. They're, they're strictly an independent body. Uh, we're funding at a higher rate than most other counties are by far. And I don't see any direct correlation between giving them $65,000 and improving the quality of the lake. Although the quality of the lake does need improvement. I'll, I'll grant you that. Mr. Pinkney? Um, I disagree with Mr. Patcher. I, I'm in favor of refunding that. I've seen that uh, <coughs> That department uh, get chopped at the knees for the last three years severely. They reach out to a lot of this county in different facets to do a lot of good work. And, and everybody's welcome to look and see where their money is spent and what they do with it. And there's not much waste out there at all. I've been part of that board for four years now, and I strongly feel that we've chopped them for the wrong reasons. And I will support that 60 5,000 going back in. Mr. Didio. Yeah, we all know that Owasco Lake sits in just about the center of Cayuga County, engulfed by the boundaries of Cayuga County. To compare Cayuga County with five other counties that their soil and water may only use or got 300,000 we have much more work to be involved in. Most people or the people that were at Monday night's forum heard where Cayuga County states as far as agriculture. Am I correct to say maybe near the top or at the top? And we have someone to, uh, in addition to the county committees, we have someone to oversight the particular work that is being done through, not just on Owasco Lake, but throughout the county. And that, to me, is 
that money and that funding is so important because if it helps to clean Owasco Lake and continue to keep it clean for our drinking water, then without it, we don't have to worry about the funding and all the other stuff that's been talked about and contingency and fund balance and things of that nature. I'm a firm believer at number one in this county in the importance is the drinking water from Owasco Lake. Mr. Lattimore. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, um, some of our organizations, whenever we give them a dollar, <clears throat> they multiply by three with the state and federal uh, contribution. So I, and this is one of those, those agencies. So the more money we put at it, the more money we actually get through some of those, those other places. Um, I mean, I've grown up on the lake and in, in one lifetime, in 50 years, I've seen the deg degradation of the lake and it's uh, somehow we've got to reverse it. And as Mr. Ryan Flush said, you know, the world is watching uh, what the Finger Lakes <coughs> does and if it was oil they'd have fences around it and be be protecting it a lot better than it is now um, I agree that uh, you know our budget is, is is tough but sitting in the audience I know that at least these people here pay at least 64,000 in taxes so I like to see see us uh, uh, pass it so thank you Mr. Bitelli. I guess I will be the one to go out on the limb and I will um, make a motion to uh, amend the motion that's on the floor and it would be to put $65,000 out of fund balance into the contingency for the use of the lake. And I guess number one reason why I'm saying this is if we give it to or if we put it into a budget on any certain department we don't necessarily know that it's going to go specifically for the improvement of the lake. And if we put the 65 in contingency, and we know it's there, and everybody in this room and all department heads know it's there, there'll be a drive from some department to put together a good plan and a good use for that money. And as Chin just said, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these things when we do them, our 65 might turn into another 180. Um, and so by doing it in that fashion, I think it'll offer the opportunity for more departments to actually look and see what can possibly be done. And uh, we'll have more minds and eyes looking at a solution to this problem. So for that reason, I'd like to make amendment to the motion. Is there a second for that amendment? I'll second. Mr. Lattimore seconds. Any discussion on the amendments? <clears throat> Mr. Farrell. A couple of questions. Um, <coughs> The weed harvester, why was it limited this year? Because we cut last year. We were cut the $60,000. A portion of that came out of ABC. What would the 65 cut do to you going into next year? What about the viewpoint that your agency were to take the next year, the next two years, take this funding, take your matching grant funding, and more or less focus as much of those funds as possible to the watershed of Owasco Lake strictly? Is that something that could be done to try to improve the condition? There's a lot that's going to go into improving the condition of lakes. It didn't happen overnight. It's not going to be solved overnight. It, it just takes looking at it as a whole to go out and evaluate what's the problem, what's causing the problems, whether it's harmful algal blooms or weed growth or any, it's the stream bank erosion that's causing that. 
what's called if you know climate change is happening, harder rain events. So we need bodies out there to evaluate what's going on. And then from there, you, you, you try to find out what's happening and where. You, then you start to develop a game plan from there. And then you figure out the cost of repairing or protecting. Uh, so can we shift uh, an allotment of the budget to uh, the Wasco Lake? We can certainly discuss that and, and see how that would play out. Definitely. The, the grants, oftentimes, we don't have much control over. I mean, this year, we sent in nine grants. We received five of them. One of them was for Owasco Lake, four were for Cuba Lake. The other grants were for Owasco Lake. Uh, that was a decision on Albany and the reviewers. Uh, we, we try, we do what we can. Once we, we do our best, and then it's up to somebody else whether or not they want to shift the cost. But I will say that without the county funding, we wouldn't have the program that we have right now and, and the support over the years. So that, that is appreciated. Before we go on, Mr. Vitelli, would you? Uh, I know you mentioned 65, but I think it's 64,000 and something. Would, yeah, that's a good number. 64,852. Would that be your amendment? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Whitman. Um, a question maybe for Doug. Whether we restore the funding to soil and water or we look at finding another solution, whether it's outside of the county agencies, what are we going to get for $65,000? Is that going to fix the lake? It's going to fix the lake. Not immediately, no. But it, it, at least it's not going to get worse faster. I, my concern is we're going to spend $65,000 to maintain what we have, which is not good. Um, Sitting here for as long as I have, I know that we will probably get a study, and that's about it for $65,000. So if this body would like to do something to fix the lake, and if we're going to spend it out of our, our savings fund balance, why not spend a half million? Um, why not try and do something different? What we're doing, obviously, is not working. Um, I'm not in favor of funding an agency out of fund balance. I'm, I'm not going to be in favor of putting the money back to soil and water out of fund balance. It's just not a good way to budget in my mind. Uh, food for thought, I guess. Mr. Mahoney. Um, my concern about going a contingency route is the impact it would have on grant funding. Um, Doug, I guess that's a question for you. Um, if we did the contingency route, what kind of impact would that have on your ability to apply and get those multiples of $2.25 or whatever for every dollar we put in? Right. So if I understand the, the uh, amendment on the floor that Mr. Wright kind of forward, it'd be 64000 that goes into a contingency account that anybody or agency or whoever has an idea can go and get. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's still a 64000 cut yeah. in the district, right. which exactly. then I mean, we could take the 64000 and earmark it directly towards Wasco Lake, and, I, and I'd be perfectly fine with that. But at the end of the day, as it stands now, $64,000 less out of our budget is still a staff person that won't be able to go out and provide the technical assistance to seek grants, to seek funding. We're an implementation agency. So when there's talk about we're, we're going to fund a study or maybe we just get another report, we go out and seek funding for implementation. The grants that we get, there's a very, very small percentage of administrators in these grants. It's implementation money, and it's usually matched with landowner money. So if I got a million dollars awarded from the Agnon Point Source this year, that's state grant dollars. There's another 650,000 of landowner match. So now we're really looking at 1.6 million that's gonna go on the ground to do projects. If, if we put too much administration money into these grants, they don't rank well. I, I was in a meeting earlier today, this morning, and we, we had the five interviewers, the five reviewers of the grant proposals for Agnon Point. And they sat there and they flat out said that they specifically look at landowner match and that if, if there's not enough of it, those proposals tend to rank lower. So if, if we don't have a lot of landowner match and we have a lot of administrative, those proposals rank even less. So we use the county funding take care of the administrative, be able to write the grants, administer the grants, and allow the landowners to kick in, and then put the state money on the ground for practice. I mean, we're, we're 
deal with million dollar projects sometimes. That's that's a big project. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on that, um, I agree with Tucker about not wanting to use fund balance to um, do operational expenses. However, uh, $64,000 investment today um, for the 170 miles of shoreline that we have in this county seems like a pretty wise investment so that we don't have to come back and, and look for those huge numbers later on. Um, so to me, it's a no-brainer. Uh, you just got to look over on Onondaga Lake and see what's going on over there and what the price tag could potentially be if we continue to to let this go the way it's going. Mr. Baxter. Yes, I think the, probably one of the key things with the soil and water is just exactly what their name is, soil and water. Uh, we don't have anybody else going between the agricultural business in this county and the resources such as Alaska Lake. Uh, I think they're a key element. They work with practically every, I'm sure every farm in the county and they, and they work to take care of the lake. Some people think that this, the government here doesn't have enough control over soil and water. That may be why they're doing such a good job with the money they do get. Uh, I would suggest that the $64,837 goes to soil and water so they can continue what they're doing. If we have enough concern about the lake, we can take money out of the fund balance, put it in a contingency fund, and foster some of these ideas along with us. Mr. Battle? Well, I just didn't understand what, what Mr. Chris said. He said he hoped you answer that question. Maybe maybe I didn't understand the question. But I understand what you're saying about administrative cost and so on. I don't understand why if there's money set aside, you can't say, okay. Here's what we're going to do. Here's our plan. We're going, we want to, 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 I'm making up what you might want to do. It may be up to you, but here's what we want to do. We want to fund a staff position. That staff position will look for these types of grants and will do this type of, type of work specifically related to, to water quality the, or related to agriculture, whatever that position would do. I'm, I'm not sure why that puts you at a disadvantage. If you know what if you know what you're going to do with the money, and it does impact water quality, why would it be an administrative or other disadvantage to say to to this body, here's what we're going to do with the money, in a, at a contingency? That's I just didn't understand that. Well, I didn't necessarily mean that it's a disadvantage necessarily. It's just other agencies can come forward as well for folks. However, they rank out. Know, So you're opposed to, never mind, I'm not going to get, I don't, I don't want to play semantic games. I didn't understand what you said, and that's that. Thank you. Mr. Lattimore? I just want to say that, you know, water quality issues, we know the or the economic impact. Uh, we had a situation with Little, Little Sodus Bay, and, and we did have Senator Schumer help us dredge that out so that the economy in the north wouldn't be affected. So, I mean, we should call on all our federal, state, and uh, local leaders in order to you know, create the tourism and everything else that goes along with our uh, safe drinking water. Can we call the question? Would you mind if I ask Mr. Kearse a question first? Actually, Doug, I have two questions. First of all, can you tell me what amount of dollars you expended on water quality management in 2015 or 14? The county funding or overall expense? The number of dollars you utilized So the number of dollars that we expended out of our budget and remember our programs are focused directly on protecting, enhancing, preserving water quality of Cuba County. So in 2014, our expenditures were one million Seven hundred twenty-three thousand and sixty-four dollars in 2015 to date, because we still have um, some time left here. We expend one million seven hundred seventy-five thousand two hundred twenty-six plus whatever the expenditures the rest of the year. This was as of as of the middle of summer last year, so we have several months for it. And when we put the budget in last year, uh, and, and if we go off well, we're, we're, I think we're pretty close to that. 
that uh, for this year. So that would be another one million one hundred twenty-nine thousand six hundred dollars that we would have anticipated uh, spending in these other four months that aren't counted according to this other figure. So, so as I had made previous requests to you and not getting an answer. Can you tell me how much of the county contribution did you put in towards that total you just provided? Uh, all of the county Your entire budget went there? The entire budget goes towards protecting, preserving, Owasco Lake. Not oh, Alaska, no. We're no. With the water bodies of the county. For example, our weed harvesting program that, that we support, that we have okay. county support. Very so good. You know, a fair even, I mean, we're, we found so maybe you could clarify for me. I, I don't think I understood what you said here uh, with regard to this amendment proposed to put the $64,852 in a contingency. Um, would you be willing to take 64852 and dedicate it just to water quality issues in your budget? All of our budget is dedicated toward protecting water quality issues and addressing water quality issues. Our whole, whole 648,517. Well, I, I know, and I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna split hairs with you because I have a different uh, perspective of what you do uh, with all that money, being that Cuba County owns the number one spot in sponsoring soil and water, and no one else, uh, even second place, doesn't come in at 300000 I would hope in the future that there's a lot of uh, energy put forth uh, to bring the different agencies, as Mr. Lattimore said, uh, bring them together. Uh, we've espoused this before, the DEC, the Ag and Markets, uh, somebody should be working towards uh, getting a designation much like the city of Syracuse has so that you can actually have a watershed organization that has the priority mission to protect this forever and keep it. I would also add, just as an information piece, for the last two years, uh, some of us have been talking to the Metropolitan Water Board in Syracuse because Auburn has been advised, Thank you. I don't know for how long, Deb, maybe you do, uh, that you need a second source of water and, and they are ready and willing to provide a second source of water to this county. Uh, I think that would be a great insurance policy as we move forward. But I certainly hope that all the energy and all the passion continues to keep the water quality issue in front of everybody and uh, work for uh, a better situation in years to come. Mr. Didio, you called the question. Correct. Okay. And Mr. this will Chair. be on the amendment? Yes. Can I, can I please call for a roll call vote on the amendment? Sure. Yeah. A roll call vote is requested, and this is on the amendment from Mr. Vitality, to put $64,852 in a contingency fund. Is that correct, Tom? Okay, and that money would come from? Fund balance. Fund, fund balance. Thank you. Madam Clerk. All set, Mina? Yep. Okay. <coughs> Tucker Whitman? No. Ben Vitale? Yes. Mark Farrell? Paul Pinkney? No. Joseph Runkle? No. Keith Batman? Yes. Hans Petcher? Yes. Terry Baxter? No. Joseph Bennett? No. Frank Reginelli? Yes. Patrick Mahonick? No. Timothy Lattimore? Um, Madam, um, I vote no. I, did, I didn't realize the contingency wouldn't let the agency work with the money, so I'll vote no. Okay. Michael Didio? No. Ryan Foley? No. Michael Chapman? Yes. Defeated. Defeated. It's defeated. And now we're back to the original motion from Mr. Didio to restore the $64,852 to the soil and water line, and that would come from fund balance, correct? Correct. Okay. Madam Clerk, and I believe we'll go with a roll call vote. Is that correct? Very good. Okay. Tucker Whitman? No. Ben Vitale? No. Mark Farrell? Yes. Paul Pickney? Yes. Joseph Frunkel? Yes. Keith Batman? Uh, yes. Hans Petcher? No. Terry Baxter? Yes. 
Joseph Bennett? No. Frank Reginelli? Yes. Patrick Mahonick? Yes. Timothy Lattimore? Yes. Michael Didio? Yes. Ryan Foley? Yes. Michael Chapman? No. Thank you. It's passed. Yes. It's passed. Thank you. Is any other legislator, Mr. Lattimore? Mr. Chairman, I don't know whether these people want to stay for the whole budget meeting, but they're they're excused if they want to go. <laughs> well, I think we'll leave that up to them. Uh, do you serve any No refreshments, or or no coffee or anything? We've got water. Water? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Keith. I couldn't hear you. I was going to wear my hearing aids. Where you going, Jeff? I think they should have the price to say hi. Come on, I don't think it's fair. I want to see your potential future legislator. <laughs> 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 Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue. Does any other legislator have any changes they wish to propose to the budget? If not, immediately I will propose a change. And I emailed everybody. I would like to move that we take $350,000 from the DM fund balance and move it to the trucks line, 51302 on page 210. In the highway department. Second Baxter, second. Any discussion? Mr. Whitman. Could you repeat your motion? I didn't hear it. Okay. I want to take three hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the DM fund balance and move it back to the truck line. Uh, and that'll bring that up to like four hundred and sixty-two if my memory is correct. It's down from the original request of 762, but I think what it does is it gives the opportunity for Mr. Wetchy and the highway department to stay on uh, pretty much the schedule that we had them develop for replacement of uh, vehicles and equipment. Mr. Baxter has seconded that. Any discussion? Mr. Batman. I'm unclear. I, I sent a, an email earlier today in, in the, um, the lack of my my clarity is that we have a we have an equipment replacement schedule, yes. which I absolutely agree with the idea that, that you should plan these things. However, we're in the middle of several large changes in perspective on the highway. The one is one person plowing. The second is is using the towns more for for snow plowing and contract work. And three is looking at the possibility of doing more contract work for paving. If these come to fruition if they work out then that that replacement schedule may not be appropriate anymore because the work that we're doing is not appropriate anymore so it seems it seems like we need to redo that schedule and therefore funding that schedule might be throwing money I don't know whatever a cliche is well the schedule is in place today I think what you bring up is uh, valid to be discussed at future committee meetings and I'm sure Mr. Wethy would be happy to take direction from the committee in the future as to just what vehicles ought to be replaced. Personally, I would have them cross off the pickup trucks and the six-wheel dump truck. And I would concentrate on a fleet that is uniform, that uh, have uh, the trucks that uh, haul the stone, haul the asphalt, do the plowing, uh, and, and uh, 
reinforce that area. Mr. Whitman. I, I do agree with, with, with Keith that the schedule may not be appropriate at that time. We're not yet to that time. We're not sure. We're kind of testing the waters with a lot of these things, and they may or may not work out, but until then, we need to keep sticking with what we we got for a schedule and you know if it doesn't work out we're going to be in a position where we got to replace a lot of equipment in one year and nobody's going to want to do that either any other discussion if hey, mr petter i believe mr uh Reddy could come to the appropriate committees and uh you know ask to expend that uh, money for certain purposes uh, when it arrives if we put it uh, in, in the fund so he can use it. So I'm in favor of the motion. So Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Farrell and Mr. Batman. That's passed. It has no effect on the budget. The numbers stay the same. <coughs> Mr. Pinkney. Mr. Chairman, at this time, I would like to make a motion to put $10,000 in to help Cuga um, in Springport do the bass tournament. Second. As we did last year, they did a great job. It was It's a great thing for this area. We just talked about Owasco Lake for 40 minutes. Uh, the same respect should go to Cuga Lake and all the lakes in the, in the county. So. I would be strongly in favor of that. Second. Okay, Mr. Pinkney has moved to <coughs> provide $10,000 for the upcoming Bassmaster event. Where would that money come from? Out of sir? contingency. From contingency. contingency. And Mr. Didio seconds. Any discussion? Mr. Runkle. Well, where are we at with contingency right now? 75000 There's $100,000 in the budget. Are you proposing to make it a separate Legislative budget account. Sorry. Ten thousand from there. Right. So we're lowering contingency by ten. Correct. Yeah. Mr. Mahunik. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe last time we did this that we had most of that money refunded because they did not need the funds. That, that's, that's true. Correct. All of it. Right. Yes. So we, could we put a provision in there that if they don't need to draw down those funds, that it automatically reverts to the county? Just to sure. cover ourselves. Yep. Claw back provision. You mind that if you need to be. <laughs> Mr. Reginelli. I think a good term would be consignment. Consignment. If they need the money, we'll cover them up to ten thousand dollars. If they need less, like for example, four thousand, we'll give them four thousand. But from the county, they have uh, the ability to draw ten thousand dollars from us. But is I that a consignment? Only if they need it. Is that an amendment, sir? Uh, no. no, just a suggestion. Okay. Mr. Petra. Uh, last time around, they came to us uh, supposedly at the last minute because they didn't have enough funds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We approved, uh, I believe, 7,500. Okay, and it wasn't needed. Uh, this year, they asked me for 10,000, and they had much more time to prepare and be ready for it. And. Uh, I can't agree with it. Uh, this is this is wrong. Uh, we have a budget uh, uh, for tourism, uh, for the uh, Office of Tourism, uh, which is funded through uh, uh, a tax on room rent and rooms uh, rented in uh, Cuba County. If if money is needed, that should come from that account. It should not come from the taxpayers of Cuba County directly again. And besides, uh, last time we were promised there would be this wonderful bump in, in sales tax revenues, and yet when you ask uh, uh, the treasurer, it ain't there. Mr. Batman? The, the, uh, the, the last time, and, and apology, uh, my apologies in advance for kind of responding to this, but because the, I thought about not, but this is the second time Mr. Petra has said this. There was no promise by this or any group that there would be a bump in sales tax. The, uh, there, there was discussion about whether there might be and, and the, in, in the long run, the advantages and so on. But to suggest that this group came here and 
promise to something that they didn't deliver is is wrong and it impugns this group. They didn't they never promised that. <coughs> the and in in terms of, of the last minute, he's the reason they wanted the money last time was the same reason they want the money this time, except they're planning ahead. They need the money because they need to show that we're behind it so they can go out and get other money. Now last time we criticized them because they came so late. Plan ahead is what we said. We'll do it this time, but plan ahead. Well, they planned ahead, and this time we criticized them because last time they didn't plan ahead. They came to the last minute because they were, in de they were desperate or what? I mean, it's just the, 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 I just want to clarify that. They did last time exactly what they said they would do, and doing this time exactly what we asked them to do. Mr. Patrick. Uh, I did not mean to imply that uh, the group actually promised. I was, uh, we were told by various agencies this would wrap up the, the numbers. I, I did not mean to imply that they actually promised anything. Mr. Lattimore. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the last time we had this event, not only did we get national exposure, but we also had the governor come and uh, participate on an on a adjacent lake. And I think we ended up with 27000 for uh, the fix up the boat launch. So I, I think that it was a win-win situation for not only one lake, but for the region. Mr. Baxter. Yeah, I'm not as good with numbers as uh, somebody like Jim Orman, but there was, a, there was no Bassmasters here for 2015, and our sales tax is down 1%. Just, just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring up uh, the same issue I had last time with this. The event is great. They're wonderful for bringing in tourism. They, I'm sure they bring in some tax dollars. It, it, it's a great event. There's a lot of great events in this county that don't ask us for taxpayer dollars to be funded. They all bring in tourism, they all bring in tax, and they're all great events. I have a real hard time using tax dollars to help fund these events. I, I can't help but think that if we keep doing this in a few years, there's going to be a lot more people, event organizers, knocking on our door. Mr. Foley. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, in regards to the tourism uh, board, I sit on that board, um, and it would be impossible for them to lend this money to the group as has been discussed in previous years. You can't take money from, they have to promote tourism, they have their own separate budget. It would be like us asking CETA to build a road to, uh, for a company to promote uh, economic development. It's just not what it's that budget and what that board is used for. Uh, that is an, a different separate board. The money would not be logical to come out of there. Patrick. And this event is not promoting tourism? It promotes tourism. Promo it, promote, it, promotes it most certainly promotes tourism. But that's a separate entity promoting tourism in the county. If, if the tourism board, like what uh, Tucker gave money to every group that said we promote tourism in the county, they would go broke. They have their own budget for their own uh, activities that they need to sponsor, not for individual groups that ask for money, and they have a very limited budget besides. Mr. Lattimore. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, to my distinguished colleague, Mr. Tucker, uh, the I know that Renaissance uh, Fair, which traditionally it had been a positive for our county in the north, I mean, if we needed to do a pilot or we needed to do some some kind of thing to try to organize it. I, I think this body should be willing and, and, uh, and open uh, to listen to suggestions that we might be able to assist in. Well, your example, I'm afraid, was foreclosed on. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think we're going to do anything to for that operation. Mr. Whitman. I, I, what's he do? Just a rebuttal to Mr. Lattimore, I believe we did a pilot with them and it did not go very well. <laughs> That's correct. Well, I'm just saying that. Correct, Mr. But we should be willing to listen. 
Mr. Reginelli? I feel anything that uh, will give us a return on our, on, on our investment, we should support. Correct. <coughs> Mr. Batman. I call the question. Thank you. Mr. Batman, Thank call you. the question. Would you like a roll call vote on us? Yes, please. Yes. Madam Clerk. Roll call? Yes, please. All righty. Okay, and this is to put uh, $10,000 back in. For clarification, this is a two third vote, is that correct? Does it come no. out of contingency? No, no. no. simple majority. What's that? Yep. Tucker Whitman? No. Ben Vitale? Yes. Mark Farrell? Yes, to put it in the contingency. Okay. Paul Pinkney? Yes. Joseph Runkle? Yes. Keith Batman? Yes. Hans Petcher? No. Terry Baxter? Yes. Joseph Bennett? Yes. Frank Reginelli? Yes. Patrick Mahonick? Yes. Timothy Lattimore? Yes. Michael Didio? Yes. Ryan Foley? Yes. yes. Michael Chapman? Yes. That's passed. That's passed. I will say that uh, I think I've let your group know that I've had conversations with the governor's office Right. And the uh, lieutenant governor confirmed on the last visit to Syracuse that some one of the two will be here to help oh, really? promote this. Like I said, we'll do everything we can to make sure <laughs> yeah. we all the fun things. Um, I had a request I would hope the legislature would entertain, um, which we talked about at Ways and Means um, last night. and. One of the things that I talked about was the bond principal and interest payments and that the um, budgeted amount is, is slightly short of the total that we will need by adding the 3.5 um, bond that is being issued to pay for the tail end of the 911 project. Um, so I would ask that the legislature entertain a, a, an increase to the um, treasurer's transfer from other funds for $127,302 and to increase the principal and interest payment expense account by a balancing $127,302. Is that in our book somewhere? Um, I, in your book, as in, book well, no, we're amending that book. That would be an amendment to that book, the preliminary yes, budget. It's in here somewhere? Yes, those accounts are in there. a page or account number or something? Um, or it would be, well, the, de the revenue account would be on, in the treasurer's um, budget, which is in. Would someone like to make that motion that Ms. Sinclair just stated, Mr. Runkle? I'll make the motion. I'll Thank make, you. Then I'm going to have a question, but I'll make the motion. Second. second. Mr. Thank Baxter, you. second. Question. We have a question. This Mr. is Runkle. a net, net no effect on the budget. Correct. Um, the the money is coming from um, a a capital dollar um, amount that Paul has. It's not. It's been collected in the capital account, but it is not identified to a particular project. It's been sitting there for a while. It's a it's an amount. The total is about two hundred forty thousand dollars. We can legally do that. We can legally do that. Okay. Um, it means, however, that it's not supported by a revenue. So next year, in 2017, we will have to address that. But it does, it does allow you to, to have a, a net zero effect in 16. Mr. Batman. So can I have clarification of the revenue comes from where? From the um, from a, a capital fund that is currently unidentified, it's not very large. That's the two hundred and forty thousand dollars. It was associated, I, I presume, with projects at some some point, um, but was not spent on those projects. The nature of capital money, as you know, is once it's capital, you can't spend it on something else. But this is a capital expenditure, so. Okay. And the. What is the consequence of waiting to, to uh, make the bonding decision in, until 2017 when we know the, uh, the impact? Well, these bills are due. It would mean that the A fund would be three and a half million dollars shorter than, um, you know, than it was going to end up. The, the fund balance actually, um, 
I think we've already discussed or brought up the state schools was going to not spend about $700,000 in that, that was in the budget. And there was a $500,000 decrease in the retirement contribution, which were unexpected items at the time we were putting the budget together. You ended up 2014 with an audited fund balance number of 18509000 and there's change, but I am. And um, so with the $1.2 million, you end up with uh, $19,709. That's, that's likely where you're going to end up toward the end of the year when I look at the revenues and expenditures so far this year. Um, so at any rate, that's that's the, the fund balance. And the capital, uh, this capital fund is just dollars that were, were left over and not associated with a specific project any longer. And so um, Paul, Paul indicated that we could use that to balance this budget and not have an impact to the budget. Yeah, no, that, that I now understand, thank you. Okay. But the, the, uh, the, the, the payment on this, on this bond will be mm -hmm. somewhere between between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, four hundred and eighty seven and change. Okay. So yeah. that will impact the two thousand seventeen budget. It will impact the two thousand seventeen. Where? Um, well it would be it would be something that you would want to provide a revenue for. Okay, right. That's, so my my question is 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 that I do understand it would impact the fund balance. Right. But the the but we're also it's also gonna impact Operating budgets going forward, in 17 yes, and beyond, by half a million dollars. The, so the question is, if we don't bond now, mm -hmm. if we wait to make the bonding decision until next year, mm -hmm. so we look at our full, our total capital needs, and we say, okay, right. can we, can we, what do we need this three and a half million mm -hmm. in the fund balance, or is the best use for that three and a half million? To, uh, the, uh, to, to leave it out of the fund balance. So in other words, not to bond. Right. Look at our, look at our, I don't think we have a debt schedule as far as I know. Right. So we look at all of that and we say, what makes the most sense? Can we bond, can we bond this money next year? I would defer to the attorney. Legally it can be done. The question is how it impacts the, uh, the cash flow and I can't comment on that because I don't know. Because you would then take three and a half million dollars out of an estimated 19.7, and whether that's enough to function, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I don't have. I don't think yeah. we've ever gotten cash flow numbers, but we've always heard between 10 and 11 million, and so even if that's off by a significant amount, there's right. not to be cash. Maybe in other issues, but that seems not to be. Cash. <coughs> so it's a practical yeah. issue, but not. It's not yeah. illegal. What's unknown, of course, is what will happen to interest rates in the meantime. I mean, you could end up bonding it at a higher interest rate. Um, which will, will cost something. This is going to be paid off in 7.39 years, I think right. is the actual number. If, if we decide to bond, how long does it take before the interest rate is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is finalized? Isn't that after it goes through the process? That's true. It is so true. The, the, that, the, that there's ends some up talk that prime will go up in December, right? right? There's some talk. Right. It may or may not. But if it does, then that would impact potentially. That would impact our rates. Correct. But if it even if it goes up in December or n or, or not, mm -hmm. even if today we begin the process of bonding, any action the Fed takes in, in December would affect our rates. So it would have to go up Point again right. in order for that. That my my point is, yeah, that's all true. But the practicality of that is probably not very great. Mm -hmm. But but well, maybe. It, okay. But I just that's what. It, the money addresses the present situation. Correct. I mean, the bond is ready to, to go out. Um, you know, I don't think the treasurer is here, no. But you, it, so in, so in, some, in some ways, you have sunk costs already. I mean, there's the financing, you know, cost that's been the, the charges for the attorneys and all to do that. So, so you have an investment in this bond already. You know what they say about some cost as well yes. as I do. Right, right. Mr. Lattimore. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the fund balance would be pretty close to 20 by the end of the year. And we also have an account in our uh, our health insurance consortium. We have like $10 million. And haven't we been creative in regards to taking some short-term loans from that, that $10 million or whatever? And isn't that a, a better way to use 
that money instead of having a lot of lawyer fees and other interest charged against use our own money to the loan internally? Well, the, the money belongs to the health consortium. They have lent it to us in the past, um, but it was more in the $100,000 range as opposed to the $3.5 million range. And I, I, I haven't asked. <laughs> um, well, between but between the two, we're know. pretty healthy. Pardon? Yes, they are. If we had to pay it back, we could. We could, but you're, you know, you're simply making payments to a different entity. Do you have the, uh, any reference to the lines? Oh. So for, uh, oh, yes. So I mean, I have the specific account numbers if you want that. Yeah. Okay. So I want to give them to the clerk. Yes. Okay. If I need that one. back at some point. It's at the top. Okay. Any other discussion? <coughs> if not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Opposed. Batman. Okay, taken care of. Anybody Thank you. else? Do you have something else to say? I do, but. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to talk about the fuel. Um, Mr. Vitale asked us to to take a look at the usage of, of fuel in the highway department, um, which we did, and we found that we could make some changes in the revenue and expenditure accounts. Um, but they are sitting on my sheet over there. We um, just need a copy of My memory's later. not that good. So. Um, so George and I have met and we, we talked about, we looked at the sale of diesel in 2014 and year to date in 2015 um, the drop in the price um, that that we have had so we would propose that um, we reduce the revenue account because we will be um, the price will be lower therefore the the sales dollar sales will be lower right if you have a, a two dollar basket now you're selling it for a dollar eighty plus a dime it's, it's less. You have less revenue. Um, we would reduce the diesel sales revenue by $100,000. And we would reduce the, um, the purchase of diesel by $308,000. I know. It is pretty amazing. Well, of the diesel fuel by $308,000. The DM is on uh, page 208 in, in your book of budget. And so you would be looking at, um, under road machinery, diesel sales. Yep. So 51300 object code 42302 and that would be uh, a decrease of $100,000 and then in the road machinery fuel oil is where the diesel fuel purchases lives um, which is object code 54031 of 308000 is that correct?
Oh, I looked at Mr. Vitale. Would you like to make this motion? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay. I'll make the motion. Are you going to go with George's figures or the initially? I will make the motion that I originally made back two weeks ago. Now, one hundred fifty thousand. So the number would probably be a hundred thousand out of the revenue, and then. The difference would be 150,000. Gives us a little bit of a cushion. Instead of 308. Instead of 308, instead of instead take it 250. 250, yeah. Right. 250 down. And <laughs> Correct. So, so what you're proposing is to reduce revenue by $100,000 and reduce the expenditure by 150? 250. 250. 250. Instead okay. of the 308. Okay. <laughs> Decrease uh, $100,000 out of the revenue and then sure. reduce expenditure by 250 mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do we have the motion? Mr. Baxter? Mr. Baxter, second. Any discussion on this? I just want to clarify something. That, so that would be a net savings of 150000 that would be hitting the DM fund balance. Okay. Which would be good because that would be offsetting the hit to DM fund balance that we made earlier this evening of 350. Yeah. Right. So it's just going to all stay right in there. Leave That's all we have planned. Very good. Okay. Any other discussion? Mr. Baker. Mr. Chairman. Seems like I'm on a spending streak tonight. Don't we have to vote on uh, yeah, to I'd like to make a motion. Vote. We have to oh, vote I'm on sorry. Vote. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have to vote on the Yes, we nope. will. We I'm will. Sorry. I thought Mr. Pinckney had some no, further no. discussion. I'm just Any further answer. discussion on this motion that we have before us on the fuel? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Mr. Pinckney, please go Thank ahead. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'd like to make a motion to fund $25,000 into Capusa and be funded by the Oneida compact money that we receive. And along with that, as Mr. Mercado made the presentation of the $27,500 grant that the county would be using as matching funds if we receive the larger grant of 250000 um, that the county would fund that also. We would pay it. We would pay it. We ha it's, Do you it's have a, that written out? No, I don't. No, I don't. So I figure we'll weed through it. I, I hear con some So I want to, uh, let, let's do the first one separately. 25000 for the budget of Capusa, funded by the Indian Compact money. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Baxter. Could you explain? Could you explain how, I understand yeah. you could do that. We already had that right. money in the budget for revenue, so yeah, we couldn't do that. Well, didn't we earmark some of that towards, uh, well, CETA? I think we yeah. did. Yeah, but at, at this you point. You have to wait the budget, I guess. You know, I mean, it's in there as a revenue. Right. It is. It's just, there's just one big lumpy revenue in there now. We're pulling from, so. Yes, it's lumpy so, revenue. I understand what Good. you're saying. So is that called? What is that revenue call that we can draw from fund if we're drawing from fund, fund balance? balance. Fund it is. That's where it went. It is. So we'll shift it to fund balance in place. Okay. Your motion is to shift the fund balance. Mr. Baxter, do you still second? Still do. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Foley. When we set up that, I saw, I swore it was a separate account that we were supposed to be able to draw from. That's what this discussion is. It, that money just goes. What's it? It's an extra like eighty nine thousand a year. Four hundred and thirty. Four thirty two. Yeah. Right. But then three fifty goes to CETA. So whatever remain, what the remainder is, and this is for clarification, the remainder is just going in the fund balance. It's not going into a separate account, and that's why we are drawing this from fund balance. Is that correct? <coughs> that's we had right talked now. about dedicating the remainder for capital projects. Right. I don't think that moved anywhere. So yeah, it's in the fund balance. 
Yeah. Well, I just want to say that, that really what ought to have, it would leave you, assuming that last, this year, um, 432,000 comes in, um, if you take the, the difference from CETA, it ends up being about $57,000. Um, and the, the ledge can create an assignment in the, in the fund balance that will handle that. I mean, you know, but it does take some kind of action to actually set it aside. Fred, did we do a resolution on that to, to move that 57 into a, wasn't there a resolution for that or no? There was. <laughs> there was, but the, the, the receptacle has to be created, if you will. Perfecting. Suzanne, wasn't the number eighty six thousand? Well, that's what I was just checking. In my in my head I was thinking it's um I, I for some reason I was thinking yeah. there was eighty six thousand after the funding of CEDA. No, I understand the question. I'm looking for the and um, secondly while she's looking at it, I just wanted to uh, reiterate, uh, Keith, I don't think you were here the night we were discussing this at Ways and Means. And uh, Matt made a presentation it was mainly uh, legal fees and, and instrumental, um, some foundation of us to act as the body that we were called upon to do this by the taxpayers. So, Steve, maybe you can help me out on that. So, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, I'm looking at the presentation, which is in uh, the Ways and Means box for November. I did look at it, still don't understand. And it said, it does support readiness and Kapusa operational response. We were talking about a potential company that might be coming in that needs to use Kapusa, and this would uh, provide sort of the operational money for Kapusa to take care of certain legal site and other types of activities within the county industrial park to sort of uh, be ready to uh, leverage this opportunity if it comes in. Fish was here that night. This is a company that is um, in the upstate revitalization initiative for funding. And uh, I think Andrew was a little bit uh, hesitant to say too much about it. It's a project in development. Um, but he did concur that there was a project uh, that we'll be speaking with. Okay, thank you. There were some questions about how many jobs. <coughs> okay. um, you're right. It's $82,000. In my head, I gave them a twenty-five thousand dollar raise. I guess. It's okay. It's just any other discussion on this motion? This is the fund Capusa. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand dollars with the money coming from fund balance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Four of us. Thank you. The, uh, the second part, the $27,500, uh, it's a, is a matching fund. Steve, I got to refer to Steve again. Uh, the, the idea is to go after a $250,000 NYSERDA grant. Uh, if, if we receive that grant, uh, Kapusa Board, was requesting that the money be put into contingency or sort of be earmarked in contingency so that if we get the award and the award contract is signed, that, you know, Kapusa knows that they can commit those funds when they're writing the grant uh, application. And if we get the award, that that money can be used for the matching funds. Uh, if we do not get the award, then it doesn't get moved. Right. No, no money needed. So that is your motion, Second. Mr. Baxter. Second. Mr. Baxter seconds. Any discussion, Mr. Runkle? So are we going to put this 27.5 into contingency? Yes. In your market? And it's going to come from? Every fund balance. balance. Is that correct? I'd say so, yes. Okay. Fund balance. Questions, Chair? Mr. Vitelli. So am I correct then? Even though it's your mark, you'll take a two-thirds vote to move that money. Thank you. Next year. 
Yeah, Fred said yes. yes. Fred said yes. Thank Fred you. I heard him nodding. Mr. Foley. Um, I think that the 25,000 and the 27,000 that we are discussing here, when they did their presentation that night, um, it, it was made clear that these dollar amounts, especially the 25,000, would be able to fund them, to move them to, and I believe the exact words were, the next level. Um, that's what we need to do with the CAPUSA as far as if they say that they can use that money and they can actually become useful um, in some capacity um, beyond what they are doing, then, then so be it. I think 25,000 is a reasonable number. The 27,000 um, in, in contingency um, will only be used if they secure additional funds. Um, I think that's beneficial. Um, you know, we have to do something with that agency. It's either it's either going to we'll let it die out, or we can fund it. And you know, I think it's uh, beneficial to fund it and kind of let it see how we can do. Especially with all the past year we've been sitting here uh, with all the ener energy projects that we've considered and presentations we've heard hours and hours. Um, I will say, so um, you know, maybe maybe it's time to invest in this. Mr. The, uh, the Obviously, I support the 2025. The problem with the 27,000 is I've been to three, I guess, presentations that have been related to this issue that talk about varying amounts of, of money, and none of those presentations the, uh, did I agree with. And so the, the, the problem I have with this is it sounds to me like what we're saying is, we'll go ahead and move forward on this grant application. If you get it, we'll provide the money. Well, I'm not convinced we should move forward on the grant application. It seems to me that, that it's, it's, uh, at least from what I've heard, there's a lot that needs to be done the, before it moves from the category of ill-advised. And so I, I think to put the money aside is fine, but I, I'm not sure how we do this, um, the, but I offer this amendment, uh, and if it's the, not the right way to do it, correct me, but I would offer an amendment that says that th this body has to review and approve both the concept and the, and the specifics of any application that goes in that would require a draw of this money. So review and approve concepts for? And the application. And the application. And the application. So there's gotta be a two or three step process the, uh, that would require the draw of that money. For grants, is it? For that's, yeah, whatever they're, if they, I'm not even sure what they're talking about, but I, well, I am sure what they're talking about. The way this 27,000 is going to be used. Is there a second? Well, I'll, I'll second it to get on the floor. Mr. Runkle seconds it. Steve has. Mr. Lynch? Uh, this might be helpful information. Under this particular grant to NYSERDA, the county would have to be the applicant to be eligible. And the county does need to go through a number of other steps to be eligible. I think I've talked to the government ops or sent an email to government ops about clean vehicle financing policy and so on and some other things. So to, to your uh, uh, motion, Keith, uh, this body would have to vote to apply for those funds because you would be the applicant. Um, I don't know if that information is, if that is helpful. Yeah, it, it is helpful, and I do understand that's the case for, for any any application. My concern is, is, is that we, we have a Codify this, number one, and that there be a review prior to the application. It's it's always sticky, as we know from past experiences, when an application for a grant comes in that's all done and we're to to approve or not approve it based upon accepting or not accepting money. And so I just, it's just I want personally I would like a second tier of review on this. It's the, we just heard so much about it. I don't know how many people here are convinced it's, a, it's a, how many people here even understand what it, what it is. But the, uh, it's Mr. Whitman? I'm worried about it. I, I feel that we have the option when it comes to us to either fund it or not. At that time, we can make that decision. This just seems like another level of micromanagement for agencies, department heads, and departments under us <laughs> that we've put our trust in to do 
to, to act appropriately with our funds and in the best interest of the county. Um, and they, they put a lot of work into it, a lot of effort, and they come to us with the, the grant or whatever it might be, and they seek our approval. And we do have the option to either give it to them or say, we're not really interested. Um, that's exactly my, my point. That's exactly my point. Someone goes to all of the time and the effort to apply for funds, and then they come to us and say, this is all done. Will you accept the money? And we look at it at that point and say, what? That what is this? This is not consistent with the direction we want to go. The, and at that point, it's very difficult to, uh, to pull the rug out from under someone. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. It's a, it's a terrible thing. In, the, in this case, the, we're not the... I've been to all of the, these, these formal presentations. I've read all the material, and I'm not clear what the proposal is. And, the, and maybe I'm not as smart as everyone else. I don't know. That's possible. But, the, but I, I'm not at all clear what this money is going to go for, and I would like, the, the, would like a conceptual approval so that we don't get to the point where they apply, they get the money, and then we have to turn around and say no. That's all. But that's fine. If, if that, that's just the you know, that's my perspective. Right, Mr. Chairman, I think I, I sent around to everybody the, uh, the article in the Post Standard yesterday saying that our neighboring county, uh, Onondaga, has, has scored the uh, $23 million solar uh, farm that will be net metered to all the other county buildings, uh, which will reduce the overall cost of operations to the buildings. Um, I hope that uh, before the funding runs out in Albany, that we're, we're in the front of the line instead of the back of the line because of the politics that normally happen in, in regards to different, different projects. Uh, the voting public has, has said 90 to 1 that they want cheaper power. And I think we should give the voting public what they want. Any other discussion? Okay, can we have a roll call, ladies? This is on the amendment. Yeah. This is on the amendment, Mr. Batman's amendment. Excuse me. I think we can do, do the amendment by... I don't sense a lot of support for it, so let's not take the time. All right. Unless it's close. Very good. Thank you. With regards to Mr. Batman's amendment, everybody's clear on that? What he would like to do? Review and approve the concepts and application. All in favor? Aye. Mr. Batman. All opposed? Aye. Aye. I think it's failed. Now, back to the original resolution. <laughs> it's a moral victory. 27500 which would be earmarked and would come from fund balance, placed in contingency. Do I have that correct? Yes. Any further discussion? If not, if you could, ladies. Which one are we doing what? now? What? Um, oh, the nurse. The clerk was asking whether it's a two-third vote, and it's not. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So we're doing it all in favor, or we're doing 14? If, if it is not necessary to have two thirds, we can try this by show of hands first. Okay. All in favor of the motion as presented by Mr. Pinkney? Aye. 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 We have a show of hands. Hang on, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You probably want to do it. You want to do it roll Ten. call. Any opposed? One, two, three, four. Four? Five. You want to do a roll call? Thank the spot. Roll both. call? No. No. Ten to five. Ten to five. Ten to five is no combination. That is passed. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thanks, Mr. Ronkel? Uh, at this time, I'd like to put forth a motion to increase our funding to Cuba Community College by $102,000. We are the sponsor of, uh, this will come from the fund balance. We are the sponsor of Cuba Community College, uh, have been for many years. We have not given them an increase in their allocation from us since 2010. Prior to 2010, the four, five, six years prior to that, uh, there was an average of one year it'd be 5%, one year it'd be 3%, then a zero, then a three, then a five. Uh, I'm proposing this increase to help our college
college uh, the most recent budget which uh, they're on a, a fiscal year uh, September to end of, end of August and they came to us did not expect an increase of debt did not ask for an increase since that time enrollment has dropped uh, six and a half percent the college is looking at uh, finding roughly seven hundred thousand dollars to balance their budget for this current year they're in and so I put, put forth that we increase their uh, allocation by that amount of money. Is there a I second? Mr. Didio seconds. Any discussion? Mr. Bennett. I'd like to abstain from this. Thank you, record. Mr. Bennett abstains. Mr. Lattimore, you had your hand up? Mr. Chairman, the, uh, being a graduate of ACC, I mean, I'm all in favor of supporting our institutions, especially our junior college um, but there's a question on on the floor at the college about regional versus the sponsor <coughs> sponsorship we're not there no but I mean if we give this money and they go regional do we have any say over how the money is spent sure we're still the sponsor well we don't even say we're having money spent anyway yeah, <laughs> right. Right. right right once it's right. gone it's gone yeah. I thought we'd have that you were The county's still the sponsor. You want you want to reach in and tell them where to spend one hundred two thousand. Well, Mr. Chairman, did did they did we not give them additional monies for some of the uh, asbestos removal? Yes. Earlier this year, are we not in the in the progress, or in the in the motions or throws of maybe raising or demolishing one of the buildings on it? We're premise? still waiting for that project to come online. There, there's yeah. But we're looking for a demo plus an ask from, from Albany in regards to replacing those buildings. Right. right. Any other discussion? Mr. Foley. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> is the youngest member of this body, um, someone that went to CCC. <laughs> what do you say? I will. I what are you trying will. to say here? Uh, <laughs> it's the shortest, too. <laughs> would, you, would you care to hang on or what? Yeah. All right. So, with that said, um, I think it's important that we support the college. Um, the, my only concern here is that they they didn't come and ask for it. Uh, we don't know what they if they actually need it or not. But I'll tell you that we had uh, before when uh, Dr. Vasinki was here, um, he did not come and ask for funds. That was actually one of my criticisms um, about the whole issue. Uh, the way it lines up, though, with the budgets is they formulate their budget in mid-summer. We do ours now. So unless they come and ask for it, then we can't give it to them when they need it to formulate their budget. So um, we have to do it now. I, I think it comes down to like an, an, a certain viewpoint that we need to realize that we have to fund, we have to give additional yeah. funds to the college and we have to budget for them when we do our budget. So this would be for next year. I think it's just a smart way to go about uh, doing so. Uh, as far as the 102,000, I don't like, like a, I would like more discussion on it just because we don't know what that's actually for. It, maybe they need more, maybe they need less. I mean, it, so, uh, but I support this in general. Yeah. Mr. Mahoney. Uh, in regards to the 102,000, I'm not in, in, not against the college in any way, shape, or form. My concern is that enrollment's down this year, and we're going to make that up with this $102,000 contribution. The problem with that and going forward in the future is we can never back down from that investment. We can never, Once we allow whatever we allow for the budget, we can never backtrack on it. That number has to stay current, right, Fred, if I'm not mistaken? Whatever. We can never, if we're going, whatever that figure is, we can never go lower than that. We can That's only go higher. That's correct, yeah. So I would rather the college come to us and say, here's what we need $102,000 for, instead of adding it to their budget, adding it to a line item or a project and, and helping them out in that way so that we're not building that budget so that we're carrying it on next year if their enrollment is up by 10%, instead of down by 65 we cannot recoup whatever that is, that $102,000 gone forever. Mr. Whitman. Uh, along with what Pat says, it, this is going to be reoccurring every year. 
my concern with this 102,000 is it's coming out of fund balance. Where is it coming from next year and the year after that and the year after that? Mr. Farrell. I'd just like to point out that with the drop of enrollment, we're seeing a drop in the revenue from the chargeback from the college. We're not getting the funds that we once were. So we're already kind of assisting the college because we're allowing them to reduce the revenue they're supposed to give us. I'd just like to go back to the gentleman that was here earlier. I mean, this money keep coming out of fund balance. I mean, we're, we're, we're spending and spending. Um, and I don't know how much you keep a track when, how much have we cut tonight in the budget? And I'll stick to this issue, but we're already helping the college out because it's not mandatory for them to give the money to us on the chargebacks. So I'm against it. Mr. Lattimore. Uh, in regards to Mr. Mahunik's uh, support, can we not give it or earmark it in regards to the building or some other thing so it doesn't add into the formula? I looked at Fred. I, I don't think so, but Fred, we own I, we the own the buildings, right, don't we? And, and uh, everybody else is right. It, it becomes part of the local sponsor share of the budget, and it will be added in every year going forward. So that, and you cannot go less than that next time around. But don't we, we own the buildings, don't we? The county yeah, owns yeah. the buildings and trust for the college, yes. Can we not earmark it for the building versus no. sponsorship? No, because there's no current capital project that they, they're asking the money how'd we, for. How do we give them the money for the cleanup of the asbestos? That was a capital project that they had identified and the county agreed to pay 50% and I think the uh, foundation actually paid, chipped in some of that 50%. So it's a, this is for, this contribution is for operations and not for capital. Mr. Petra? Mr. Chairman, uh, I believe we need to consider reality. Uh, our high school graduation rates around here are declining. I, I believe all of Cuba County every year there's less and less. We have less uh, potential customers for the community college. Uh, we're competing with other community colleges around us uh, for people. And uh, we need to have the uh, Board of Trustees uh, start reducing the, the overhead of the college to actually accept reality. There's going to be a smaller and smaller pool as we go along, so. Mr. Foley. Um, I think we need to put a priority on education in our community that stands with the community college in general. With that said, um, we, we can either do this now or they're going to, and I've heard, they're going to come to us when they do their budget to ask for more money. And at that time, we are going to have to say, where are we going to find the money? We didn't budget for, oops, that's what we've done the past two years, have been in the legislature. That's always the pro problem. Um, and this is an issue. And so, I mean, as, as long as, if we don't approve any additional increase to our budget to give to them for next year, we are going to have to find it, hopefully, when they come and ask us next year, uh, and, and maybe it's 200,000, maybe it's 400,000. I think 100,000 is a step in the right direction. It allows us to plan, at least for some kind of increase, since it hasn't been done in the past six years. Mr. Reichel. I was going to say our fund balance is in very good shape. And to have it sit there and not use it for an asset like the college, I feel is a waste. Of college is seeing is going through the pains right now of reducing their expenditures by roughly seven hundred thousand dollars due to the lack in FTEs that are being moved. And, and in light that we have not given the college a bump since 2010 whereas our salaries have gone up expenses have gone up I feel is a waste thank you Mr. Lattimore. Uh, one idea, um, could the money not go for uh, scholarships to increase the population? I think, so. I think Mr. Westlaw alluded that this was really operational money, so. Yeah, that really would help the budget. That would help the budget. Could I call a question? Mr. Batman. Thank you. Thank you. Could I call the question? Yes, sir, Mr. Batman. Question's been called. <coughs> 
The motion is to provide the college with an additional $102,000, that money to be taken from the fund balance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Want to raise your hands? Yeah, one, two, three. Okay, all opposed? I believe it failed. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sinclair. Um, okay. We uh, looked at diesel in, in the first um, part. In the second part, now we're visiting unleaded gas. And so on page 212, um, under the road machine refund, you would find an expenditure for um, gas. It is account number 54032. 54032. It's a gas. I mean, it's that's the only word on it. It's about in the middle of the page. Mm -hmm. It's in the the expenditure line is in the middle of the page, um, two twelve. Object code five four zero three two. The number is budgeted at eight hundred forty one thousand dollars. And we would I would ask the legislature to entertain reducing that expenditure by one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars to seven twenty five. And then the offsetting or the the revenue that's associated with that account actually comes in on page two o eight under road machinery um, department number five one three zero. And the expense, or the yeah, the the revenue line is divided. Um, it's five, what or four? Excuse me, four one two seven two, which we would I would ask the legislature to reduce by nineteen thousand seven hundred twenty dollars, which would make the new number two hundred eighty three thousand two hundred eighty dollars, and reduce the agency line, which is four one two eight two by $96,280, the new number would be 548720 again reflecting the reduction in the price of unleaded gasoline. Someone care to make that motion? Yeah. Mr. Batman? Second. Mr. Baxter seconds. Any discussion? Suzanne, what's the overall impact on that? Um, let's see, well, you're, you're, you're gaining um, 116000 in terms of non-expending, um, ninety six. so it's, it's pretty close. Mr. Pecking. So was that based as the diesel was? I mean, the, the, uh... That's based on the reduction in the, in the price of gasoline. A couple of years ago it was three fifty nine, and now I think it was 207 something like that. So it's it's really kind of a wash. But Mr. Batman? How can it be a wash? Don't we have a fleece kind of, of uh, 50 or 60 cars that use gas? Um, I'm, I'm not sure how many cars there are. Do the sheriff's cars use gas? Yes, they do. County gas? Yes. How many you got, Sheriff? How many cars? Yeah. 32, I believe. How many? 32. 32. 32. So the rest of the county must have 32 or so. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We have a lot of cars. I don't understand how we save. Yeah. I, I would, just don't understand. Maybe we don't. I would defer to, I had, George and I talked about this earlier this evening, and I just double checked with, with George. So um, I had based that, I had slightly different numbers. I had based that on, on the number of gallons and the price. Um, but I think George may be trying to <clears throat> to leave himself some cushion on that. Well, that's only 12, 13 percent reduction unless they did the math right. wrong. Yeah, it's not a lot. So clearly, that's safe. So that, I mean, it's fine. Use, right? It's fine. They I mean, are. They're, we, based, we, they're, we, based they're based on prior on use. Right. We we so went through the number of gallons. The number of cars doesn't really matter. It's the prior <laughs> use. George, so what's what's saying? With us? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Mr. Baxter, you had your hand up. I did. Yes, I think that uh, this hundred and sixteen thousand dollars reduction in expenditures, 
is all is a savings all the way through because this gas is sold to other departments. Whatever their right. gas line is should be dropped. I mean, figure out which department uses this much and uses that much. It's just there's a savings to the county of 116,000. We don't sell it to anybody on the street. Right. It's all all within our budget. This money is spent. Well, it's it's also sold to other agencies. I mean, so so there are, are other agencies that come and fill up their vehicles. You know, the city buys gasoline from us, for instance. Well, we don't want to sell it to the city cheaper. Yeah, we'll get the ten percent extra. Well, we we have we have an administrative fee that goes along with that. So actually, we'd like to sell them more. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? George, you come. If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> and it's passed. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sinclair, do you have anything else? No, that would be it for me. Okay. Anybody else have anything at this point? Okay. We still have Ledge 1, which is on your agenda. I would move ledge one. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Whitman. Any discussion on ledge one? Yeah. Mr. Foley. Yeah, just uh, at this time, Lane, can we get a, a definitive amount that we are using out of fund balance right now? Sure. You had um using the hundred and seventeen thousand three hundred and fifty two tonight. So it's left to one point six four four. Any other discussion on ledge one? All in favor? Mr. Whitman. I'm in favor. All in favor of ledge one? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Guess this not going anywhere, right? You might roll call. <laughs> <clears throat> Does anyone have any other business they'd like to bring before the legislature this evening? We do have a couple other items, but I'm asking, do you have something, Mr. Denny? Motion to adjourn. No, second. Second. I, I'm asking if you have anything else you'd like to oh, discuss. We have other business to conduct before we leave tonight. All right. I just had a question. Where does that leave our tax levy at? Well, it leaves it at what it was before because you were at 125. I don't know. I have three different numbers. I got three. Mr. Landmore, you had a question? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, this budget is a living, breathing. It moves as we move through the, the course of the year. Uh, I'd just like to have Lynn, if she would be so kind, as to just give us a, a little recap in regards to monies that we've said that we're going to use from the fund balance i don't think we've ever ever used the total amount we've always returned money to the fund balance. so i have a, a point of order hang on, hang on. point of order okay hang on what's well, a point of order it takes precedent you recognize mr didio who made a motion to adjourn i seconded it the motion to adjourn takes precedent we need to vote on the motion to adjourn it's, it's our rules. I don't Mr. Didio, would you like to withdraw that motion? I'll withdraw. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Batman, for well, the lesson. Can I? Can we all please? Mr. Just ask, I just want for the new, the new freshman uh, uh, legislators that are coming on in regards to this county has always been pretty stringent with spending money. And I think that our history of we asked for X amount from the fund balance and we've never exceeded or gotten close to the actual. Money. Is that right. correct, Lynn? Correct. For the last three years, we haven't utilized the amount of fund balance that we had budgeted for. So that's a good thing. So, so I, I just want our new newly elected to, to see that we have been prudent. I'd entertain a motion for executive session for the purpose of discussing discussing litigation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Then we are in executive session. Mr. Chairman? It's all right. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Could we have the newly elected to stay with us? 
I prefer not to at this time. They are not sworn members of the body as yet. Uh, I have some information. Uh, hey, I got a copy of this.